Hi, everybody, and welcome to another lecture in finite math. Uh, today, we're going to take a closer look at something that we've already talked about, but we're going to do a bunch of examples. And what we're going to talk about is Venn diagrams with three sets plus the universe. Now, remember what the universe is. The universe or the universal set is the set of all objects under consideration. In our universe, we're going to have three sets. We'll call them A, B, and C. Got to call them something, right? And each set will be represented by a circle. Here's set A. Here's set B. And you know what? I don't like the way I've drawn this. I'm going to do it again because uh, I'm going to have to write inside these sets. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I don't like that either. Okay, here's two sets, A and B. And the third set, C, will probably, although not necessarily, intersect both of them. And according to the method that was in our text, and this is standard method, you'll find this in any text, that we number each of the disjoint unions. All of these uh, regions, disjoint regions, are going to be numbered. Uh, one, this is the set of all objects that are in set A and nowhere else. So here's one. Two. This is the set of elements that are contained in both set A and set B but they don't happen to be, excuse me, in set C. So this is region two. But region three, this is the set of elements that are in set B but are not in set A and they're not in set C. So let's shade in set B. There's set B. We went across the top one, two, three. Now we're going to go across the middle in order. This is going to be set or region four. Region four is the set of all elements that are in set A and in set C, but they're not in set B. So how will I draw this? Ah, uh, let's see. This is region four. It's in both set A and set C, but it's not in set B. Going across from left to right, the next region is five. What can we say about region five? 
It's in the A circle. It's in the B circle. And it's in the C circle. So region 5 is the set of all elements that are in set A, and they're in set B, and they're in set C. And we'll shade it like this. And continuing to move from left to right, this will be our region six. What can we say about region six? If an element's in region six, then it's in set B. If an element is in set six, it's in set C. But if an element is in region six, Notice that it's outside, it's outside of set A. So region six is the set of all elements that are in set B and set C, but they're not in set A. Now we have this region. We'll call it region seven. These are the elements that are in set C, but they're not in set A, and they're not in set B. So region seven, these are the elements that are in set C only. Am I forgetting anything? These are the elements that are in set A, and they're not in set B or set C. These are the elements that are both in set A and set B. These are the elements that are in set B, but they're not in A, and they're not in C. These elements, they're in set A, they're in set C. These elements, they're in all three sets, A, B, C. These elements, region six, they're in set B, they're in set C, but they're not in set A. In the elements in this region, region seven, they're in set C, but they're not in set A, they're not in set B. Have I accounted for all of the possibilities? What about an element that's not in any of these sets? Uh, the element is not in set A, it's not in set B, and it's not in set C, so it can't be in any of these three circles. Ah, this is the region outside all three circles, region eight. Any element in region eight does not belong to any of the sets A, B, and C. So this is our Venn diagram with three sets, A, B, and C, and the universe. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, hopefully it sounds fairly simple. We're going to take this fairly simple way of uh, partitioning objects into specific sets. We're going to use this method, this arrangement, uh, to solve counting problems. And we say counting problems, and we think, well, that's going to be easy. Well, the counting problems that we're about to do aren't easy. 
If they were easy, we wouldn't need to develop this sort of a, an accounting system to solve the exercises. So we'll use Venn diagrams to solve our counting problems. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Look at this exercise. Employees of a restaurant are surveyed, eight cooked food, nine washed dishes, 18 operated the cash register, four cooked food and washed dishes, five washed dishes and operated the cash register, three cooked food and operated the cash register, two employees did all three of these jobs, Five employees did none of these jobs. I think I want a job like that. But anyway, uh, we're going to be asked some questions uh, about what else these employees did and so forth and so on. And in order to do that, we're going to have to draw a Venn diagram. Now, let's see what we're talking about here. Uh, eight cooked food. So we'll call this C for cooked food. Nine washed dishes. We'll call that set D for washed dishes. Eighteen operated the cash register. Let's see, we can't use C because we're using that for cooked food. So cash register, the people who operated the cash register, they'll be in set R. Okay. Four cooked food and washed dishes. Well, before we go any further, no, maybe not. Uh, four cooked food and washed dishes. So this is cooked food and washed dishes. Five washed dishes and operated the cash register. So that's D and R. Three cooked food and operated the cash register. So that's C and R. Two did all three jobs. So that's C and D and R. Five did none of these jobs. Okay. Let's draw our picture, our Venn diagram. The big square is our universe, and here the universe contains all objects under consideration. And what are we considering? Employees. So the universe is the set of all employees. Now, well, let's see, we have three sets. We have C, D, and R, so let's draw those. Here's C, here's set D, and here's set R. I'll put the R over here. And 
And this is our region eight. The set of all elements that aren't in any of these three groups. Elements that are not in any of these three groups, we put in region eight. Now, usually, not always, but uh, oftentimes, that we'll do region five first. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Region five is the set of all employees that are in all three of these circles, C, D, and R. This is region five right here. Two employees are in region five. What about this? Five employees didn't do any of those jobs. I won't say they didn't do anything, but they didn't do any of these three jobs, cooking, washing dishes, operating cash register. These five aren't in any of the three circles. They're not in C, they're not in D, they're not in R. So where do they go? Right, region A. So this is region A. Now up here it says eight cooked food. Well, all the employees that are in any of these four regions, one, two, four, and five, any employee that's in any of these four regions cooks food. So how do we know into which of these four regions? But we distribute the eight employees who cook food. The answer is, right now we don't know. So let's look at some of these other things. Wash dishes and operate at the cash register. That's D intersect R. D intersect R. And what is this? Let me just shade it. D and R. Five wash dishes and operated the cash register. D and R. That's regions five and six. Well, does that help? It does because we know how many are in region five. Two people are in region five. And five people are in region five and six. So guess what? Three people have to be in region six. Now, does that work? We have two people in region five. And in this region right here, which is region five and six, which is dishes and register, we have five people. Are there five people in this region? 
There sure are. Two here and three here. Okay, we got that whipped. We got this whipped. We got this whipped. What about this one? Cooked food and operated the cash register. Okay, permit me to erase some of my scratch work from before. Three, cooked food and operated the cash register. <clears throat> cooked food, register, that's regions four and five. In this read, in this pair of regions, region four and region five, these are the ones that cook food and they operate the cash register. This region right here is both cooking food and operating the cash register. And there's a total of three employees in this region. What was that? Oh, this is pair of regions, four and five. Four and five. And how many people are in region five? Two. So how many people are in region four if these two regions combined have three? One person, right? So in region four, there's going to be one person. Now let's make sure it works. In region, let's see. In region five, people doing all three jobs, we have two people. And in region four, Region four and five, we have three people total. They cook food and operate the cash register. Cook food, operate the cash register. And let's see, there are Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. One in region four, two in region five. Put them all together, we have three people. That works. Okay, let's work our way up. Four employees cook food and wash dishes. Here's cook food and here's D dishes. The people who are in both circles, C and D, are those people in regions two and regions five. So let's write that down. Two and five. And we know that two people are in region five. And let me shade this. Let's see. Region two and region five. Let me shade this.
we have four people in this shaded re region total. Two are in region five. We're, we're looking to place two more people. Two of them are in region five. Where are the other two going to go? I guess they got to go in region two. Now, does that work? Two people in region two. Two people in region five. And we have four people that are in region two and region five combined. Region two, two people. Region five, two people. Combined, that's four people. Okay, that works. Eighteen operated the cash register. Well, this whole big circle is the cash register circle. That's region four, five, six, and seven. Holy moly. So that's four, five, six, and seven. The good thing is we know how many people are in most of these. One person is in region four. Two people are in region five. Three people are in region six. And how many are in the remaining region? We don't know. But if we add up the people in all four regions, we have 18. So I guess we have 18 minus One plus two plus three. Eighteen minus one. Minus two. Minus three. So that's eighteen minus six is twelve. Okay, I'm going to write 12 down here. And does that work? We have 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 12 is 18, which is exactly how much we're supposed to have. Beautiful. Okay, oh. You know, sometimes it helps to work backward. Everything's falling into place. Nine washed dishes, okay. And the dishes region, the dishes circle is regions two, three, five, and six. Two, three, five, six. And we know how many people are in two, five, and six. Two people are in region two. Two people are in region five. Three people are in region six. The only region we don't know is region three. But all total, there are nine people 
and this each group. So we're looking at nine people total minus those in region two, minus those in region five, minus those in region six, that's four plus three is seven. So two people have to be in region three. Let's see if it works. Two plus two plus two is six plus three is nine. It works. Okay. How many cooked food, period? They say eight. Well, the people that cooked food are those people that are in regions one, two, four, and five. And we know how many are in each of these regions, except region one. One, two, four, five. In region two, we have two people. In region four, we have one person. In region five, we have two people. And in all of these four regions combined, we have eight people. So the number of people in region one is going to be eight. The number of re uh, the number of people in all four regions minus the number of people in region two, region four, and region five. So that's eight minus five is three. Three people are going to be in region one. Let's check it out and make sure it works now. Three plus two is five, plus one is six, plus two is eight. Okay, it works. Now, believe it or not, we're not done. Uh, what we've done so far is we've just organized our information so that we know how many people are in each of these eight disjoint regions. And I'll tell you what, let me make this a, a black 12. We've organized our information. Now let's look at the questions that we're asked to answer. Now we get to the questions. How many employees were surveyed? Well, let's see. Aren't all of these different regions disjoint? They're disjoint. They don't overlap. So what that means is, if we add up all of the people in each of these regions, we're not going to be counting anybody more than once. We'll be counting everybody exactly once. So just take the number in region 1, region 2, region 3, Region 4, Region 5, Region 6, Region 7, and Region 8. Add them all up. That's how many total employees there were. Number of total employees surveyed. 
3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 13, 25, 30. I hope I did that right. Let me try it again and I'll go back. 5, 17, 20, 22, 23, 25, 27, 30. Okay. Now I'm pretty certain I got it right. How many employees only cooked food? Now the food cookers are in the C circle. And the ones that only cooked food are not in any of the other circles. The employees that only cooked food are in the C circle, but they're not in D, so they're not in region two or four or five. And they're not in region R, the cash register people, so they're not in region four or five. Okay. The people who only cooked food are in Region 1. Region 1 are the people that cooked food and didn't do anything else. That's 3. Oh, wow. You know what? Once we get our, our Venn diagram filled out, these questions are a snap to answer. How many employees only operated the cash register? Okay. People who operated the cash register are in the cash register circle. And the ones who only operated the cash register are not in circle C, and they're not in circle D. So region 7 is the region of those people who operated the cash register and they didn't do anything else. So that's 12 people. Fourth question. How many washed dishes and operated the cash register but did not cook food? Okay. Dishes and cash register. So we're in the dishes circle, and we're in the cash register circle. That's this region. Dishes and cash register, but did not cook food. Ah, uh, you know what? This region is in the cook food circle. Region 5 is in the cooked food circle, so we can't count that. That leaves just region 6. Does it make sense? Let's see. People in this region uh, wash dishes because they're in the dishes circle. They operate at the cash register because they're in the cash register circle. But they're not in this region, so that means they didn't cook food. Yep, that's exactly right. This is the region we want. Three people. Okay. Wow, once we get this Venn diagram filled out, these questions are a snack. Question five. How many people washed dishes or operated a cash register but did not cook food? Now, this is tricky, and I'll tell you why. They're not saying how many people washed dishes and operated a cash register. They're saying how many people washed dishes or operated a cash register, which means They could have washed dishes, but they didn't operate the cash register. Or they could have operated the cash register, but they didn't wash dishes. Or maybe they washed dishes and operated the cash register. So the people who washed dishes or operated the cash register, that's union. 
It's anybody who's in set D or set R or both. When it says or here, that's set D, set D or set R. Those are the people who are in set D or set R or both. Okay, let's shade this out. Set D. Set R. Or both. So we've got set D. We've got both. And we've got those who are in set R. So these shaded regions are those people who are in set D or set R. They wash dishes or they operate at the cash register. Oh, but now we don't want to count anybody who cooked food which means that anybody that's in the cook food section, we don't count them. So if they're in the cook food circle, we don't count them. Well, what do we have left? Regions 3, 6, and 7. That's 2 people, 3 people is 5, plus 12 people is 17. Okay, now for question 6. How many did at least 2 of these jobs? In Region 8, these people didn't do any of the jobs, so we can't count them. Whoops. Before we answer the last question, let me unshade everything again. Okay. How many people did at least two of these jobs? Region 8, those people didn't do any jobs. People in Region 8 did zero jobs. What about people in Region 1? These are the people who cooked uh, but didn't do anything else, so we can't count Region 1. Region 3, these are the people that washed dishes but didn't do anything else. And Region 7, these are the people that operated the cash register but didn't do anything else. Okay, I see what's going on here now. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to erase some of my previous answers to give me a little bit more room to work. Region 8, they didn't do any of those jobs. Region 1 did one job. Region 3, only wash dishes, they did one job. Region 7, only did the cash register, they only did one job.
Okay. You know what that means, don't you? Everybody else did at least two jobs. So what is everybody else? Four, five, six. No, let's see. Two, four, five, six. Two plus one plus two plus three. Eight people did at least two jobs. Well, you know what? Once we got that Venn diagram all filled out, answering those questions was pretty easy. Uh, I think there's a lesson in there somewhere. If we get the Venn diagram filled out completely, the questions are a snap to answer. And maybe there's something else we can take from this too. Uh, you notice when I was filling out the Venn diagram, I didn't start at the top and work down to the bottom. Now, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm not saying don't start at the top and work down to the bottom. Uh, what I am saying is we don't have to. Uh, sometimes it might be a good idea to start at the top and go to the bottom. Uh, other times it may not be a good idea to start at the top and go to the bottom. And let's see, where did I start when I was filling out the Venn diagram. Uh, I looked for the people that were in all three regions, and that's region five. If there's information that tells us how many people are in region five, that is in all three of these circles, that may be a good piece of information to look for first. Sometimes that information isn't readily available right off the start. And so we can fill in region five first, but when this information is readily available, go for region five. Uh, when it's not, uh, we're gonna go for the overlapping regions like uh, how many are in two and five, or how many are in five and six, or how many are in four and five, Uh, generally, that's how we do it. That we go for five first, and then we try to figure out two and five, or four and five, or five and six. Uh, if we can figure out reach and eight, that's a good, good one also. Uh, but generally speaking, we like to go for reach and five if that information is available. Uh, if it isn't, well, we do something else first. And again, uh, the order in which we fill out these regions is in part going to be determined uh, by how that information is given to us. I'll tell you what, let's do one more example, okay? Okay, our next example. I made this up on the fly, so I hope it works. 150 patrons are surveyed, restaurant patrons. 78 like shrimp cocktail. And we'll denote the shrimp lovers by capital S. 68 like mozzarella sticks. We'll denote those people with the letter M for mozzarella. 64 like Artichoke dip will denote that group of people with the letter A for artichoke. Those are our three main groups. So let's draw our Venn diagram.
Eh, I don't like the way I drew that. I want to make my circles bigger so I can write larger inside the circle. So this will be my shrimp circle. This will be my mozzarella circle. And I have an artichoke circle also. One, two, oops, A for artichoke. Region one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and region eight. Those are the people who are not in any of the circles. Uh, these people don't like any of them. Okay. Sure hope this works out. Huh, 11 like doll three. So they're in the shrimp, shrimp circle, the mozzarella circle, the artichoke circle. So those people who like doll three, they're in region five. And how many was that? 11 in region 5. Okay. Region 5, we've got 11 people. Ah, uh, what else? 14 like shrimp cocktail and artichoke dip. Here's shrimp, here's artichoke, and the people who like both shrimp and cocktail, let's see, what is this? This is shrimp and artichoke dip, that's what it is. So that's going to be region four. You know what? I think I'll write this in black after all. 11. This region, or these two regions right here, region 4 and region 5, uh, these represent the people who like both shrimp cocktail and artichoke dip. So that, that's regions four and five. Region four, region five. And we know that there are 11 people in region five. And in both of these regions combined, there are 14 people. So in, in these two regions combined, there are 14 people. 11 of them are here. So how many of them are in region 4? 14 total minus 11 in region 5 leaves us with three people in region four. So let's see, we got this one, we got that one. Okay. Oh, wow. This one 
This is gold in the street just waiting for somebody to bend over and pick it up. 25 only liked the artichoke dip. See region 8 here? These are the artichoke lovers that don't like uh, shrimp cocktail and they don't like mozzarella. So those people who only like the artichoke dip Those are the people in Region 7. 25 only liked the artichoke dip. That's Region 7. So I can put 25 in right now. Ah, that was a no-brainer. I, I could have done that right off the bat. I just didn't see it. Okay. So what do I have now? <laughs> Thirty well let's see. I guess this is the easiest one to do right here. Uh, the artichoke dip people are made up of regions 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we know how many people are in all of these regions except region 6. Oh my goodness, this is a good one to work on. So artichoke people, that's regions 4, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, let me write that down. Four, five, six, seven. And in region four, there are three. In region five, there are 11. In region six, we don't know. Region seven, there are 25. So right here in region six, the artichoke people, there are 64. Minus region four, region five, and region seven. Minus three, minus 11. Minus 25. So let's see, that's 36, 39. Uh, I guess that's going to be 25 in region 6. Okay. And let me just make sure that that adds up to what I want it to add up to. We have 64 people total in these four regions, 25, 50, 51, 64. Yep, and it works. Oh, this is looking good, good, good. Ah, 35 liked both shrimp cocktail and mozzarella. Here's the shrimp circle. Here's the mozzarella circle. These are the people that like both shrimp and mozzarella. So this, this pair of regions, Region 2 and Region 5, these are the ones that like shrimp cocktail and mozzarella. 
And let me write down that this is region 2 and region 5. And I know how many people are in region 5. 11 people. I have 11 people in region 5. And the number of people in region 2 plus the number of people in region 5 add up to 35. So if we have 35 people and 11 of them are in region 5, how many are in region 2? 24. Okay. In region 2, 24 people. Now let's make sure that that's right. In region 2 and region 5 combined, we have 24 plus 11 is 35 people. Yep, that works. Oh my goodness, this is going along very, very smoothly. Oh, wow. 68 liked mozzarella sticks. Okay. That's region 2, 3, 5, and 6. And the only, the only region we don't know is region 3. Region 2 has 24 people in it. Region 5 has 11. Region 6 has 25. The number of people in regions 2, 5, and 6 are 24 plus 11 is 35 plus 25 is 60. We have 68 people total and 60 of them are in these three regions. That means the other eight people have to be in region three. And let's do that again and make sure. 24 plus 11 is 35, plus 25 is 60, plus 8 is 68. Those are the mozzarella people. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All we have now is region 1. The shrimp cocktail people are region 1, region 2, region 4, region 5. So that's region 1, region 2, region 4, region 5. Region 2 has 24. Region Four has three, okay. Region five has eleven. We have seventy eight people in region one, two, three, and four. And in region 2, we have 24. Adding region 4, we have 27. Adding region 5, we have 38. 78 people total. 
38 of them are in regions 2, 4, and 5. So that means the other 40 have to be in region 1. Does that work? 40 plus 24 is 64, 67, 78. Bingo. Okay. Now, again, we haven't answered any of the questions yet. As a matter of fact, I haven't even put the questions up there. But we have a pretty good idea. Have I left anything out? How many sourpusses don't like any of these things? The people that don't like any of these things, they'd be in region eight. Ha, ha, ha. Well, we have 150 people total. And the ones we've already accounted for are in regions 1 through 7. So let's add that up. 40, 64, 72, 75, 86, 111, 136. So 136 people are in regions 1 through 7. We have 150 people total. So that means we got 14 people uh, out here who don't like shrimp, they don't like mozzarella sticks, and they don't like artichoke dip. Okay, now we've answered, we've figured out the entire tribe. We haven't answered any of the questions yet. But we know, or we can account for the tastes of all 150 people surveyed. Okay. Okay, here are the questions that we were supposed to answer in the first place. How many patrons didn't like any of the three? <laughs> Good thing we found out how many people were in Region 8. These are the people that didn't like any of the three. We've already figured that out. 14. How many of the patrons liked exactly one of the appetizers? Well, it has to be region one. These are the people that liked only the shrimp, none of the others. Region three. These are the people that like only the mozzarella, none of the others. And region seven, these are the people that liked only the artichoke dip and none of the others. So region one, region three, region seven. Region one is 40, region three is eight. And region 7 is 25. So we add those up. 40 plus 25 is 65, plus 3 is 68. And number 3, there are two ways to do this. Let's do it both ways, uh, just for the sake of making sure. That, that we, we understand both ways. If they liked at least two, then that means they either liked exactly two or they liked three. These like exactly two, shrimp and mozzarella. These like exactly two, shrimp and artichoke. These like all three. And these like two, mozzarella and artichoke. 
So the people that like at least two are these four regions, two, four, five, six. And in region two, we have 24. In region four, we have three. In region five, we have 11. And region six, we have 25. So let's see if we add them all up. 27, 38, 63. The other way that we could do this is just to take the total number of people and that's 150 and subtract the ones who didn't like uh, subtract the ones who only liked none or one of the appetizers. The total number of people minus those who didn't like at least two appetizers. And so let's see. Those who liked none of them were 14. And those who lacked, liked exactly one was 68. Okay. 150 minus 72 is 63. So that's a nice point. Uh, if we have, if we know the people that liked at least two, and we want to find the number who didn't like at least two, no, I'm saying this wrong. If we know the total number of people, and we want to find the number who liked at least two, take the total number, and subtract the ones who didn't like at least two. Those are the ones who liked none of them or exactly one. Okay, well that'll do it for examples today. Study these carefully, please. Uh, these are good examples. And problem solving, especially problem solving of this nature, is an acquired skill. Uh, nobody comes out of the chute at birth knowing how to do these things. Uh, the first few that we do, they're going to be kind of tricky. But the more that we do them, the better we get. And we get good at it quickly. So uh, show some determination and some stick to itness. Work through these. The more we work through, uh, the better we get. And the, the better we'll start improving, the, the more quickly we'll start improving doing these things.